Namaste. So, in the last few videos, we've been exploring Paticca Samupada, the process of creation or manifestation or becoming as taught by the Buddha. Now, we've also explored the process of creation back in the Lakshmi Tantra series. So that gives us an alternate view. And then we can put the two of them together and get an extraordinary insight into how things become, how they come into being, how they manifest, and how they are created. So this understanding is essential because to get out of the trap of manifestation, cause and effect, karma, and so on, we have to understand how we got into this situation in the first place. So these examples are very, very powerful and very helpful for understanding how we are entangled in creation. So we went over a lot of the theory in the last couple of videos, but I'd really like to give some really good examples so that you can understand how Paticca Samupada is working. In that way, you can come up with a solution to extract yourself from the whole creation and all the entanglements and attachments of it. So basically the key to this understanding is that every creation is an information network. And because it's an information network, it has similar structure whether, it, whether we're talking about creating a whole universe or a single galaxy or a human being or even something like a computer, because a computer is also an information network, an information structure, and because it follows the laws of ontology, which is something we discussed way back in the beginning of this channel, Therefore, there are similarities at all scales and in all examples of the generation of becoming by Paticca Samupada. So let's go over a few of them and see if we can understand. We already went over the basic process that by creating a system of terminology, name and form, along with consciousness, the whole thing comes into existence. Let's quote the Buddha's verse, this deep and enigmatic verse that we've been studying, actually, in these last few videos. Insofar only, Ananda, can one be born or grow old or die or pass away or reappear. Insofar only is there any pathway for verbal expression. In so far only is there any pathway for terminology. In so far only is there any pathway for designation. In so far only is the range of wisdom. In so far only is the round kept going for there to be a designation as a thisness. That is to say, name and form together with consciousness. Now, this is a very deep and enigmatic sutra. Really, you should go and read the whole thing. I've put a link in the video description below. You can read the whole Mahanidana Sutta. Very much recommended to understand the background for what we're going to discuss today. So, all right, if the range of becoming is limited by a network of terminology. Uh, what does he say here? A pathway for verbal expression, a pathway for terminology, a pathway for designation. Uh, in other words, naming things. This is information. And when information is part of a process, 
it becomes an information structure. So we're going to look at the information structure. First of all, let's talk about the whole creation. How does the creation start? Well, it starts with Shiva or Brahman, Nirguna Brahman. No qualities, no form, no names, uh, no boundaries, no time, no space, no dimension, no nothing. <laughs> so then how does from nothing something comes? How does that happen? Well, what happens is that Shiva manifests Shakti. And this is the primal duality at the root of creation. Shiva, the Nirguna Brahman, manifests Shakti, the Saguna Brahman, with all kinds of qualities, activities, everything you could imagine and more. The whole variety of the creation is in her. He is the energetic and she is the energy. He is the source, she is the effect. He is the yang, she is the yin. The basic duality. And then what happens? There's an alternation between the two. Yin, yang, yin, yang, yin, yang. Huh? Expansion and contraction, expansion and contraction. Breathe in, breathe out. See, this basic duality, this rhythm, of expansion and contraction is key to the whole thing, the whole cosmos. So then what happens? Well, the cosmic creation begins. And from Shakti emanate all the other Shaktis and the gods, including what we call the Chaturvyuha. Uh, these are systems or structures of four gods and their companion goddesses. So they together then manifest the next level of form, which we could call the pure creation. In the pure creation, there is really no influence of time until the very end of the creation, when the whole thing is withdrawn again into Shiva. But as far as the, when the creation exists, for a fantastically long period of time. That stays as it is, with no change. All those beings, the viewhas, remain until the very end of the universe. So this is the pure creation. This is what's known as the kingdom of God, Vaikuntha, Goloka, heaven, where God is personally present, God and goddess. <laughs> and, uh, of course, the nature and the quality of that creation is very wonderful and beautiful. So, that is one of the main destinations in spiritual life. But then what happens? Then the lokas are created. The lokas are the homes of the sages and the demigods. And these are the beings that come into existence at the beginning of a creation, and then they go out again at the end of a day of Brahma. So they disappear, and during Brahma's night, there's nothing. Then Brahma, when he wakes up, again manifests the whole relative creation, uh, the impure creation. And of course, the result of this is the general creation of planetary systems and planets like ours and different life forms and so on and so forth. So this is the plan of creation and it's manifested over and over and over again. Okay, so now let's give another example. Let's give an example of a galaxy. So in a galaxy, begins with a black hole. Imagine Shiva as the black hole. Huh? It really fits as an example or as a metaphor because he does nothing. Shiva does nothing. A black hole does nothing either. It's just there. 
But because of its qualities, because of its properties, all kinds of things manifest around it. And this is the galactic core. This would be Shakti. So Shiva and Shakti do this dance, huh? <laughs> this very powerful, very beautiful and complex dance. And because of their dance, then the next level huh, of the inner bands of the galaxy manifest. And this is the same as the pure creation. And because of that, then the gap between the core and the arms comes into being. And this is like the lokas, where the demigods exist. And then finally, the gross creation, the outer arms of the galaxy manifest, and that's the whole story of its creation. How about another example? A computer. A computer has various different parts, but they are also in an information network, and they also manifest or come into being in an exactly parallel way to Paticca Samuppada or to the creation of the universe. How is that? Okay. Well, first you have the computer when it's off. And that's like the gap in between creations. Only Shiva is there. Shiva is like the power supply. He doesn't really do much, but if he's off, there's nothing going to happen. But when Shiva is turned on, when the power supply is turned on, what happens? There's something called a boot ROM, read-only memory. And what this does is it loads the loader that loads the operating system. So Shakti is like the boot ROM. Shakti is like the inner core uh, the first program that runs when the computer is booted up. So then what happens? Then they manifest the OS, the operating system. And the OS is like the pure creation. Huh? Once it's brought up, it's a structure that persists as long as the computer is running. Huh? So this would be the... Uh, analog of the pure creation and the demigods, the lokas. The lokas are like the operating system services that are actually used by the other parts of the creation, which are analogous to computer programs. They use the operating system services to do their different operations and so on. <laughs> it's a funny analogy, but it really works if you think about it. I'm assuming, of course, that you know something about computers. If you don't, I don't know if you're going to get much out of this. But anyway, this is exactly the same as the generation or creation or the dependent origination of a living creature. A living creature starts with a sperm and an egg. Shiva and Shakti again, the primal duality. And they combine together and then they create what's called a blastomere, or blastocyst, which is composed of stem cells. And then the stem cells, these are like the, the viewhouse. Huh? The stem cells all individuate and specialize into the various types of organs and this and that as the fetus grows through the stages of uh, conception and gestation, going through different plant and animal forms until it reaches the human stage. And this is then the full creation. See, a, a living creature is an information network. And the information is carried by the DNA throughout the entire organism. It's not until the end of life when the telomeres begin to shorten and then the DNA information cannot be communicated so well. The organization of the body starts to break down and then that results in death. But of course, that, that's just like a program that becomes suspended. Huh? In any operating system, modern operating system, it's a multiprocessing system. So there can be any number of programs active at the same time. But the ones that aren't fully present 
uh, the ones that aren't on top, are suspended in the background. They're still there, but they're not running directly on the screen until you switch the context, of course. Then another one takes place. So this is like a living being, being in life and accumulating memories. These are like program logs. Huh? Program logs stay resident in the operating system. Even if the process is uh, suspended, and then the process can come back into the foreground. That's like taking the next birth. But still, the logs are there in the background. So it remembers what it was doing when it was suspended. And that's why we have certain desires and ideas and ways of looking at things as soon as we're born into a new body. We still have the memories left over from the previous ones. And those are the program logs or the karma that we need for this life. So anyway, I won't, <laughs> I won't try to stretch this analogy too far. But the important point is that all information networks basically grow according to the stages of Paticca Samuppada. So this is the universal process of becoming, which is implemented via information structures and networks, and this is how everything is created. Aum Tatsat, Aum Shakti Aum.